stone, I believe it was like four foot six, something like that. And um, in height. Mm -hmm. And said that Mary Magdalene was the first to go there during the, it was still dark. And she went, and there was guards at there. I guess there was 16 guards, and there was guards all around the tomb because they was afraid that somebody would come and take him away. Uh, his, uh, the gentleman, that, the guys that were with them or someone else. And so it also said that if, if any one of them, any of the guards went to sleep, they all got, ex everyone got executed. So I guess it was, they kept each other awake through the night. And also, they sealed the, they sealed the tomb, so no one could get in or, or bother it. And it wasn't a the tomb wasn't for Jesus; it was for Joseph of Agra. Oh, I forget the name. I got my notes there. But it belonged to him. And what he did, he uh, he he let Jesus borrow the tomb. They said, and he took him down from the cross. Joseph did, and and wrapped him in linen, in white linen. And put him in the tomb and close the rock, you know, close the stone. And then they also said that during during the time there was a great thunder, and an angel descended down from heaven. And I don't know if they were thinking that was what broke the stone loose or whatever. But whenever they looked inside the tomb, there was nobody there. The linen cloth was laying there. So they're not really sure who moved the stone or whatever. And I've got more notes over there. You want me to bring them to you? No, I can't read them. Oh. I'm trying to. Well, I can read. Right. I got my inspector gadget thing. <laughs> can anybody find anything else about this stone or anything? I believe they said it was made of stone. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Well, that would be novel. I'll just tell you, novel. <laughs> Now that she's coming back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, like I read through three commentaries. Um, well, excuse me, two commentaries and a Bible and a um, study Bible, mm -hmm. and it never mentioned anything about a more common square stone. So that's that's kind of new to me. Mm -hmm. um, oh, she's got her book. Yeah, you can take it back. Yeah, actually, we didn't know how long it was going to be. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of looking at it right now, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, and it will say that the, that the, um, that the square stones were much more common than the round ones. And they said you can see in Matthew 27, 60, about the stone. If you look at the if you look at the tomb pictures on there, it actually has a rectangular type shape on there. Are we talking about the shape of the burial site? Yes. What 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 have you what have you touched on so far? The only thing I've touched on is what type two types of stones there were in Jerusalem at the time, round and a square one, and that they the Guards had their 16 guards there, and if anyone fell asleep, they all got executed. And Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, and then the angel, uh, they say a big thunder came, and I guess we rolled away. The Mag Mary Magdalene rolled away the stone. And they said you could push it, but um, that's far as I got. Yeah, I, mean, I, guess, I guess that's where I would get confused at. I mean, Within all the parts of Matthew, um, well, within Matthew 27 and probably Mark and Luke there too, mm -hmm. it talks about rolling away the large stone. At least in New King James Version does. Um, and that's why I like when I did my when I studied and looked at it. You know, Matthew 28. Is the only place where you see the great earthquake and the angel rolled away the stone. Mark doesn't have anything about how the stone got moved. Mm -hmm. Luke doesn't have anything, mm -hmm. nope. and John doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So nobody else explained how the stone moved on the day the right. Marys went. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Just Matthew. So when you see rolling, and it it could be just I mean 
King James Version is probably about the same way. It probably says rolling. You know, it could be a translation thing. I, I, I give up a lot to Hebrew translation because <laughs> Hebrew, trying to translate Hebrew to English is not going to be easy anyway. No. But what happened on, I'm sorry. No, yeah, she, she was asking the question of what the sepulcher was. When I went to an arche archaeological site on the computer <coughs> last night, I wanted to see from an archaeologist's standpoint if they found anything concerning the tomb mm -hmm. and the rock and the rolling, the stone. Um, limestone, limestone and marble were used at Jesus' site. Okay, Still would be heavy. The guy said on the on the uh, site that it, it's as heavy as a car. Mm -hmm. So these are not little stones. And they showed a picture. The stone was yay thick, huge, so it weighed as much as a car. So it would take quite a few Roman guards to roll and put back. But like I said, there was an earthquake. The women were coming, and there was an earthquake. There was an earthquake at Jesus' crucifixion. There was an earthquake of Jesus' rising from the dead. I don't know if there's an earthquake when he comes back a second time. I didn't get a chance to really look into that because I didn't have much time. Well, but it's interesting, would the quake have moved the stone enough mm -hmm. for him or others to go in and out? That's all I can think of. That's right, because I mean, the, the earthquake being there... You know, Jesus wasn't there when the stone was rolled away. He was gone. Right? <coughs> he left what we would call, I guess, midnight at this point. You know, he left at midnight. As soon as, the, as, soon as Sunday rolled around at 12 o'clock a.m., he was gone. The tomb was left empty just for the sheer fact of the people that come in. So, you know, could the earthquake have moved it? Possibly. But I think if I'm not mistaken, you know, Every single gospel does say, you know, there was an angel or angels there. Yeah. Yeah. And angels yeah. are an very, angel. very yeah. strong. Men, and Mark, I think, they, I think they even went into more detail. Mark actually said that there was a man in white there. You know. So. And they talked about the angels sitting on the stone. Yeah. Yeah. The, Matthew, Matthew says that he was sitting on top of the stone waiting for Mary and Mary. So, and, and I do agree. I do agree with you there on the fact of how tall it was. It was their their graveside, their graves, their mountain sides. I guess you could say it wasn't made so you could stand in it. That's true. It was. It was more of a. It was and, carved out, wasn't it? Yeah, it was car. It was carved out. You know, even Aiden couldn't stand in it. I mean, Aiden's five right. three. She couldn't stand in it. Mm -hmm. So it was made to. You know, usher the body in, sit him on the the concrete or the stone in which he was laid on, which they call the sepulcher. How do you want to pronounce that one? Yeah, and he would say, excuse me. And and I mean, and that's pretty much what it was there for, for somebody to lay down. You, yeah. You're not going to stand the body straight up like they did in the Egyptian time when they right. just. But they all had money sitting in their tombs too, so hey, they needed to stand up and hold it, right? Plus, they would also leave them in there for about a year, and then they would go back in there and, and basically move them. There would be nothing but bones left at that yeah. point in time. So they would get they a would, box with yeah. the length of the biggest bone and put everything in. And that would be. And then they would slide that into the what was carved out into the the shelves inside the the tomb area in there, and that slab would be cleaned up and ready for the next body. Now I did. I did read that, you know, it was, that there was a track there, you know, not, not necessarily like a track like we would use for a pocket door or something like that, but more stones there to help, help hold it in place. You know, even, in a, even if they had a square room, I mean, that would still help, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, like I said, my mind's blown at the whole square thing. I, I've never seen it, never heard of it. But once once you said it and I look and I googled that part, I mean it come up like fifteen different ways of how it could be square. So. Wow. I mean I can't could tell you which one was positive on it, but <laughs>
Plus, plus, I guess, in looking at that, there's a lot of things in the Bible that aren't as detailed as we would like them to be because how important is it yeah. in, in developing your knowledge of the Bible and God's Word and where, where are we to put our efforts in learning God's yeah. Word? Uh, I mean, God created everything. He moves mountains. That yeah. little stone ain't nothing for his angels or his believers to move. So, uh, basically, it's just helping us understand that a big stone that we couldn't personally move by ourselves yeah. that was there. And the fact that, um, like you said, God left, Jesus left before it was even moved, that, that proves that uh, someone came and I don't want to say pick them up, but uh, you know, <coughs> yeah. lies Jesus and that's so. And they and they left together yeah. through whatever was in the way. Yeah. Uh, and then that, that was just to save the Eminem girl from having the same movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it, Eminem girl. Yeah. And then <laughs> and and then the guards, they were they were accused of being all asleep for I don't mm -hmm. know. Were they asleep or not? Does it say whether they were asleep or not? Uh, Matthew says that the guards um, mm -hmm. fell in fear mm -hmm. of what was happening. Mm -hmm. So they fainted in fear. Right. Oh, okay. But you know, they didn't start snoozing and you know snoring or anything like that to nobody's knowledge. Right. But when you look at men in the military or men under being subject to a leader. Uh, you can look at today's military and they're run ragged and they've got vehicles and motors and uh, all this other. These guys back then, they were the motors. They, everything they did was by their own hand. Yeah. Uh, so when they had to do something, it's very easy for them to be tired, wore out, uh, and when you sit still after you're already exhausted, it's very easy to fall asleep or fall into a daze. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, of course, God can make anybody go to sleep oh, yeah. or faint or whatever. Um, so it's amazing God can do what he wants, but he's formulating what he wants us to know and how he wants us to know it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really interesting. Or you, you get something? Uh, yeah, it's just that I pulled something up on my phone before church, and um, I just wanted to see the customary traditions of the Jewish people for burying their dead. It's, a, it's, it's you know, with the spices of myrrh and, and thick nerd and aloe, but um, I was looking mainly for the tomb, because that's what we're really talking about, not the the burial, you know, putting the cloth and everything. Right? Yeah. The typical tombs of Jesus' day were a kind of a cave or excavation cut out in, into a rocky cliff. Sometimes groups of families would share these burial areas. An opening into the side of a cliff might lead into a crypt of several rooms used by different families. There would be an outer chamber and an inner chamber, or at least a front and back. In the outer chamber, the body would be laid out on a bench or shelf cut into the rock. After final farewells, a large ground stone, usually rolling in a groove like a track, would be rolled into place to cover the entrance of the tomb. These stones would often be whitewashed as a sign to passers-by that the area was a grave site. This was done because Jews incur ritual uncleanliness by coming into close contact with the dead body. This could be endured as an act of charity for a dead relative, but one would not wish to incur it for a stranger. The marked entrances thus serve as a warning to stay clear. Very poor people who could not afford a rock-hewn tomb or foreigners who had no land were buried in vertical shafts within designated fields. There was a reference to the purchase of the potter's field in the Gospel of Matthew, which refers to the existence of 
these sorts of cemeteries for strangers who died and needed burial. I thought that was interesting. A brief repast would follow, which includes the ritual drinking of wine and eating of the bread of mourning. For the closest relatives, like the spouse or child, mourning lasted for 30 days. Signs of mourning were wearing special clothing, not wearing the last tracees during prayer, and not answering greetings in the street. Oh, really? And then they showed, you know, the box after a year, they put the bones in a box, and they showed that right there, but yeah. I thought that was interesting, that the poor were in vertical shafts in a field. Interesting. Hmm. Is there a version of a pound box? That thing? I mean, like they always, you know. That you've got, uh, I mean, you can fit more people vertically than you can horizontally. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, truth be told. True. As long as I mean, the water I, table is deep. Yeah. I mean, man, kind of going off of what John said there, we have a friend who um, is from our home church. She got the chance to go to Jerusalem and do a, a tour. And she got to do a lot more in her tour because of who her tour guide was. Oh. He had um, citizenship and special rights. And, um, but even when they got to the possible tomb of Jesus, you know, they're in the they're in the side of a mountain, and they're like, "This is possibly where he lay," because they still don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you know, and people are out there looking for. It. That's the funny thing. People are still out there looking for his tomb because they want to find his bones. They want to find remains mm -hmm. of it, but they're not they there. That's why they're not going to be able to ever find the tomb. Really, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like um, where is it? Is it North Dakota? I think it's North Dakota. They have a place that says this is the um, this is the opening oh. to hell or something like that. Yeah. This is the gates of hell. I think it's in North Dakota. North Dakota. Yeah, I think that, I think it's actually in Hale, North Dakota, or Hale, South Dakota. Oh, there's a hell somewhere? There, there's a hell, North oh, okay. Dakota. Or, yeah. Um, so I mean. Yeah. My daughter-in-law's parents live in South Dakota. Yeah. In what Dakota? South, South Dakota. Dakota. South Dakota. They love it there. But yeah, I mean, even with her going there, you know, they got to the tomb area, or what they thought was the tomb area. And the funny thing, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering correctly through her slideshow, you know, there was actually water dripping in the tomb which they were showing everybody. They're, they're in the side of a mountain. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Dead Sea is way away from it. Yeah. I mean... They're not in anywhere near a waterfall or anything like that. There was actually water dripping and it never filled up. Oh, weird. So, I mean, I mean, from what I remember seeing, I mean, it almost like a baptistry type thing. I mean, it was like, it was dug down at the bottom. I mean, you had the shelf, but I mean, so, I mean, it is. But I'm kind of like John. I mean, there's, there's a lot that hasn't been that's not known about what the tomb is. I mean, they could probably track it down to say, okay, it's this kind of stone was known in this area. You know, you know, was it square? Well, square one was more common. It's kind of like right. say, well, you know, most of Chesapeake drives Fords because Ford, Fords, and Fords are more common than any other vehicle, right? Right. I mean, you, you don't really ever know, unfortunately, <laughs> but. I mean, the thought of it being square makes more sense. Yeah. And I mean, especially the the cork style, where it's it just like fits into the mm -hmm. the hole kind of thing. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense to me. I would think that would be more of a that'd be a harder thing to get out. Okay, then. They're supposed to go back after a year and put the bones in a box. How are they going to take that door out? I don't know. Well, it's like any other puzzle, or, or even like the Egyptian pyramids, there's a, a way. Yeah. Uh, there's a gentleman in the America that by himself uh, held, uh, stood up a obelisk or a, what they call it, a statue that are. Uh, Like the Washington Monument, made of stone, not mm -hmm. one block at a time, one piece of granite, 
Uh, and, he, and he basically did it himself by um, wedges and boards and uh, excavating and up all the stuff. And he, he, would, he would utilize a single rock to put under it uh, on a, underneath a heavy object. And that little bit of uh, leverage would allow him to spin something 25 tons yeah. uh, by himself with it one hand. Oh, wow. Uh, it's just getting it balanced and getting it to where he applies a little bit of pressure and, and then you just spin it uh, around and around. But there's always a, a way to figure things out. Because in today's society, everybody wants instant gratification. Okay, I yeah. want this thing, boom, there. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Well, I mean, to go back to your question, Sylvia, I mean, okay. Mary and Mary had the same question, like, how are they going to get in? They're going a day after. I mean, pretty much a, a day to a day and a half after Jesus' body was put in there. And they were going in there just to make sure it didn't stink. Mm -hmm. They were going to clean. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. dress the body. Yeah, I mean, the square stone can be rolled. Not according to Fred Linson. <laughs> I'll see about that. <coughs> Maybe it can be rotated. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just like this. Right. I mean, it, well, I mean, it had to be rolled away. They, they didn't say it was rolled away edge to edge or pulled easily. Yeah. You know, they just said it was rolled away. Which, I mean, if you've got an angel rolling it away, what does it matter if it's rolled away easily or not? Exactly. I mean, that's... we got major strength behind it. They're strong. I mean, they're, they're extra strong. Yeah. Either that or he could have been really tired, and that's why he sat on top. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm wondering is that, okay, so they're going to the tomb to, to put extra spices. Why do they think about bringing some men with them to roll the stone away so that they can do this Did you job? The men, oh, still, the the men were sleeping. 17 men. Oh, that's men. right. That's mm -hmm. right. They, they, were they were still there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Between that and the men thought he was just dead. Mm -hmm. The disciples themselves thought he was just dead. True. Yeah. Forgot about the guards being there. Yeah. Well, the guards couldn't touch her. They were there to make sure nobody touched the body. But they could roll away the stone so that ladies can go in to put the spices on. Not break without breaking that seal. Yeah, not not without breaking that seal, yeah, which oh, was yeah. <clears throat> seal, you which was um, Pilate's seal, pretty much. And mm -hmm. if they did that, they might as well just shove the sword right in their yeah. stomach and be done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, there is a lot to be found out about the tomb. I, I guarantee you that, but. I wonder if the guards were put to death anyway because the stone was rolled away. No. no, the Bible says that they were paid off. Yes. They were paid off. They were paid, yeah, they were right. paid that's off. That's right. They lied and the religious leaders backed them up. That's right. I forgot about that. So they would not die. The religious leaders that sold Jesus into bondage. Yes. They were paid to The same ones that made sure he was crucified. Mm -hmm. Made sure that the guards did not die because of what Jesus did. It's kind of funny, kind of ironic almost. They were saved by Jesus either way. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, the roundabout way. Because for any other reason, I mean, they would, they would have probably been killed. If they would have held Mary and Mary, they probably would have been killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm not completely sure. And Michael, you might be able to help me out on this one. Who actually sealed the tomb? His, I mean, he had to put, because back then, I mean, a king seal, a governor's seal, you know, it was on the ring. That's what they, I'm thinking, too. The, wa the, the wax was yeah. heated up, and then boom, mm -hmm. there's the seal. Yeah, basically, uh, when he went, when when the high priest went to Pilate and said, "This man said that in three days he's going to come back again," that would only cause more havoc if the disciples came away during the middle of the night and stole his body. So Pilate turned around and said, 
secure it however you think is best. Yeah. And I got you the guards on there, and they sealed it. So I'm assuming, it doesn't say, but I'm assuming that it was the governor's seal that was on there after it was sealed up. And I would assume rectangular or even a, a round one on there, you would make some type of X embedded into the, the bedrock or the side of the mountain there. And then in the center part there, that's where you would place the seal between the two ropes. Because if that broke, somebody's been inside it. Yeah. There, there would lie another question to study further at a different time would be, okay, Mary and Mary were going to do their rituals. Was there another seal going to be applied afterwards? Because the seal would have to be broken for them to do mm -hmm. their customs, but another seal has to be applied afterwards. Yep. I mean... And if I'm not mistaken, I think they have multiple rings or seals, ways to seal it. So, you know, not, Pilate didn't have to be there, you know, just do it. I think he gives permission for others to use it, but, you know, who was there to actually seal it? Yeah, most kings and had authority on there. They gave authority to other people like Daniel did. Yeah. He was given a uh, Nebuchadnezzar's seal on, a, on certain things. Yeah. But I mean, he didn't send his his number one guard. You know, they just said, "Here's some guards, take them." You know, he didn't send his right hand man that said that guards himself. So that's usually the person that you would think would have it. Mm -hmm. Not not the private. You know, <laughs> thinking in our terms. Not the private that just joined five months ago. Sure. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't get the he wouldn't get the most important thing. No. I mean, well, so. in, in that light, the reason why they probably didn't send their most trusted, uh, valuable uh, officer or soldier is that I don't want to have to kill them. Yeah. Uh, and train somebody else. That's true. <laughs> uh, or you know, have to reestablish a trust uh, that you're not going to overthrow me or whatever. Yeah. Right. Lots of good questions coming out of this one. I kind of like mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's just not a lot to set in stone, you know, without trying to be so punny. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it does bring up a lot of good questions and a lot of mm -hmm. things to have to sit down and think about. Because there is so, for the whole story within, you know, going from the time of being made a prisoner to dying on the cross, the tomb part is literally only a few verses mm -hmm. in, 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 in any of the Gospels. I think the longest it, it spans is what? Maybe a total of seven verses before it says something about he is risen? Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean... I mean, you think of you know the thousands of verses there are, no matter what what version of the Bible you read. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's literally only seven verses on the tomb. I wonder story. if the church fathers, you know, like Polycarp, Polycarp Origen, and you know pe those people way yeah. back down yonder there, in their writings, I'm wondering if they had anything to say about that. I'm maybe pretty not, sure in the... Maybe maybe other than the Bible to explore their writings. And I'm, and, well, I'm pretty sure that in some form, in some way, there's something more written on the tomb. You know, they did find those scrolls of biblical time, you know, yeah. of all those other people that wrote during the Bible times, you know, they found all the scrolls that were written by them. Mm -hmm. you know, but this is the inspired part of God's Word. You know, we're only going to get 
the, so the books that we got, the 66 books that we got, that's what we have to go off of. It's almost a, uh, a thought process of, does that really matter? I was just thought, does it really matter all the fine details? No, that's where faith comes in. Exactly. Yep. Sometimes think, it's good to be naive. It's very good to be naive. I'm yeah. naive. <laughs> I am. I really am. I mean, like, if you tell I, I grew up in a household where my mama said it was gospel, it was gospel. I didn't question her, you know, that kind of thing. And so a lot of times there's a lot of things that I just don't question. I just say, well, it's in the Bible. That's right. I don't it question it. it. it you know what I mean? Like, done. so. Done deal. That kind of goes, changes the subject a little bit, but uh, uh, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they had no, um, identified need. Uh, and then they, like when God first approaches Adam, he says, Adam. He calls Adam, and Adam doesn't answer, and Adam finally answers. And who told, you know, and they talk, who told you you were naked? Where did you learn this from? Mm -hmm. And it's, but, it happened, God provided a way back to, to be, be close to God, but now that the, the knowledge is out of the bag, is it wrong to be knowledgeable? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, is it wrong to seek knowledge to for the purpose of your needs, needs of your family, needs of your fellow uh, beings? Uh, and, and then the way I look at it, and I'm, I'm more than likely wrong, but now that we have that sin in our lives we're born into it is that we have the knowledge so you got two choices every second of every day what do i go do things right or do things wrong with what i have so is the doctor wrong for making a cure for cancer or making a cure for covid yes or no and that, i mean it, yeah. When you use your thought processes, you can even answer that question, yeah, it's wrong. Because you're saving a, a, a sinful person, or you're saving a non-sinful person, or, some, or what may be perceived that way. Yeah. But then, in God's word, love everybody as you love yourself. So if you don't save the sinner, you don't save the criminal, then you're going against God's will, or his commandments. Yeah, I think knowledge is, is is key, but I think it's the way you use knowledge right. is where it gets you. Good or bad. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not necessarily always good or bad, you know, even though that's our two choices. Mm -hmm. But it's a thing of using knowledge in the way that it's going to help somebody else not stumble. Right. Which is totally different than using it for a bad way or a good way. Right. Not I mean, yeah. Because, you know, it says in um, Hosea that, you know, my people die because of lack of knowledge. I mean, it's point blank. I mean, that's, if you don't have knowledge, if you don't look at stuff, if you don't try to study stuff, you know, because you're going to get that one person somewhere down the line, you know, and Miss Sylvia can attest to this very well probably, is you're going to get that one question from one kid one day, and you're going to be like, I have no clue. Oh, you that know? already happened. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just, I mean, it happens, and you're going to get, you're going to get that borderline to... convert, or, you know, that new convert, a person who has just stepped into the faith, and they'll be like, why in the world would they use a square stone instead of a circular stone? I mean, it, it, that'd be the question. And then it's almost like, you have to go and say, does your salvation matter if it was square or circle? Or does your salvation matter that he wasn't behind the stone at the end of the day? Right. I mean, it, or they could have used it any way. Yeah. That, like, is that, either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, granted, yes, it'd be nice to know if they use a square or a circle. And just out of curiosity. Yeah. Would, He's was, that kid, yeah, just I, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> that oh, he was that kid? He was yeah. that kid. <laughs> I mean, but... So he knows. Yeah. <laughs> He knows they're coming because he was that kid. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 
I've dealt with I've dealt with those kids and those adults. So, but I mean, you know, no matter what kind of study you do or looking at different little things, whether it's a lot in the Bible about it or you know a little about it, it's always good to look at it and actually know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, even though I didn't really find a whole lot myself. You know, it's great to come in here and sit down and listen and hear what everybody else had gotten because I was sitting here thinking, I'm like, God, you have to show me something or here, you know, <laughs> let somebody else say something because, I mean, literally my paperwork says, Matthew 28, 1 through 10 says, great earthquake and an angel rolled away the stone. Mark 16, 1 through 8 says, it was rolled away. Luke 24 says the same thing. John 20 says the same thing. It was rolled away. It, just, it won't dare no more. Mary, Mary got there. It's gone. It's gone. It's all it's gone. <laughs> and I'm saying you can still roll a square stone. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and there you go. I mean, that's that's just what it all boils down to. You can still roll a square stone. I thought that was interesting. Versus round and square. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Anybody else got anything else to say? No. Well, I learned quite a, quite a bit. I mean, poor versus and oh, Joseph of Arimathea, being that Jesus came from a poor family. If Joseph didn't step in, Jesus would have been buried vertically instead of horizontally in a cave or whatever. So that's another interesting little tidbit. Hmm. And I'm wondering if Joseph of Arimathea was thinking that. Like, I don't want, you know, this is like, I love this guy. I don't want anything, you know, I want to respect him and show him a proper burial. It was know. more, yeah. And more if, if God can do, build the earth and uh, everything that we know in existence in seven days, six days, what's to say, what? What's to say? <laughs> God can whisper in John's ear or Hank's ear and, hey, don't put him in the ground like that. Yeah. You got a you got a place. Put him there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he would have been. Spoke to Mary. You know, his name will be Jesus before he was even born. Yeah. Yeah, because he would that that day they would have been thrown in there in the fields with the criminals because he was hung on the cross. Oh, that's right. Mm. Were the criminals given any kind of a? No, basically they was taken down and thrown a hole. To make sure they didn't stink up the place. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I bet you nobody went back to get their bones and put it in the box. Nope. Nope. No, they're still sitting in the ground. Yep. So Jesus was well taken care of. That was when we got the bones, but I mean. And you can see that kind of love in this church here that when the, the people in the church see a need, of, uh, a certifiable need, that they step up and and are and do the right thing for the person that's in need. Great, great discussion. Anything Next week. Else? So, nope, nothing else here. Well, yeah, there is. Hey, well, uh, I've always got to be. Oh, well, now you're certified. Yeah, I'll right. let that go. <laughs> Say that again. Be certified. Let it go. Uh, we got to discuss next week's well, topic. The thing, no, we don't. The thing was no, we don't. Oh, oh, okay. It's a surprise. Oh, we have a topic, huh? We have a topic. We are going to talk Who invented that? It's a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring the surprise. How about that? Um, no, it, it's a surprise. Alright, don't let the cat out of the bag. It's okay. No, oh, it's okay. If it's going to be a um, surprise. Wait, 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 I can't study if I don't know. Actually, it's going to be a topic that we're kind of um, going to be developing, I guess you could say, over the next uh, probably three months. Ooh. So it's actually going to be cool. built upon. Um, but the main, the main question for next week is going to be, am I a disciple? We're going to be looking at discipleship and um, all the parts of discipleship and hopefully building within all that come on Wednesday nights, um, building our discipleship platform. Are you I using guess. your confidence? 
You're not a preacher. You're not a disciple. You're not a... <laughs> so, well, I'm hoping that we can um, come to know ourselves as disciples within, within this. But first, we're going to look at, am I a disciple? And we're going to look at, you know, what is a disciple? We're going to look at, um, I know if I'm a disciple as far as the characteristics of discipleship. You know, why should I be a disciple? Because some people don't want to be a disciple. They're, they're, they're scared by what they have read. So um, we're kind of going to look into that and then build off of that. Man, I wish Ron Clark was here. He wanted to have a Bible study on discipleship right. so bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, uh, 